a small group here, I can shake hands and, and uh, extend my warm and loving greetings to each one of you. I say it's really an honor and pleasure to, to be here. To s this building uh, comes from a vision of Black Elks and literally was built in fulfillment of that vision. And uh, if you get a chance to read Black Elk Speaks, uh, it describes in detail this whole first vision he had, a series of visions he had that foretold exactly where we are today in human history. And at the very end of this vision, I won't go into the details of it, he finds himself in the highest mountain of all, and he sees various things uh, in the sacred hoop of the people. It's a hoop of many hoops, and the center stands a mighty flowering tree. He said, he looks to the east, and two men come flying like arrows, and between them rose as daybreak star. They came and gave him an herb called the daybreak star herb, the herb of understanding. It had four blossoms, red, the east, yellow, the south, black for the west, and white for the north. And they said, with this of understanding, you shall have power over all things. And anything you do, you shall undertake it. And I dropped it upon the earth, and where it fell, there was no more darkness, and so forth. And so we have copies of that. I don't know if we have any right uh, over at our place today, but if you do, I'll bring some back over. I think maybe we, we have to get some. So this has been really a place that we've been building uh, to really recognize the oneness of the human family. And I think that's what this is all about, is like Backout said, the first piece is a piece we have to find in here. Because when we find that piece, then we have peace with all living things. When we find that oneness and go beyond the delusions of separateness, then truly we become in our, in our na most natural state as we are as children. And so I see Noran and Rand were here, and some of you may have gotten a chance to read our uh, fourth way. Uh, also, there's another uh, document I'll be happy to bring by if you haven't got a chance. Uh, a presentation I made at the United Nations in 1995 where we outlined what, what's happening right now. And I, I look at 12 years later and how exactly what we said at that time is happening. At the time I said because of the increase in human rights violations and also the e efforts of systems that would by just naturally need to be transformed because they no longer serve the needs of humanity, that exact words that terrorism and random acts of violence would dramatically increase. This is 1995. People said, you're crazy. So we are at this incredible time of transformation. This time foretold in sacred prophecies of indigenous peoples across this hemisphere and around the world. And by other prophecies of other traditions. You know, for those of you who might maybe be Christian, you know, the Lord's Prayer, which is probably the main prayer that people remember from that tradition says, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. And I believe with every fiber of my being that we have this ability at this time to, to establish this peace on earth. And that's why we talk about our fourth way. The first way we know it doesn't work is that's a simulation. You know, there's no way that a simulation trying to get everybody to be exactly the same is ever going to work. It hasn't worked. We all are unique, beautiful human beings, just like every grain and every grain in the world is, is a little bit different in some way. There's not one piece of grain the same. We are unique human beings. We have beautiful cultures. We have beautiful spiritual traditions. We have many beautiful things to contribute to the whole. Secondly, resignation doesn't work. Giving up, falling into alcoholism and drug abuse, whatever that is, it doesn't work. A lot of people have, in their frustration, what we're dealing with today, fallen into that place. But we know that doesn't go. That's not going to get us there. Number three is violent confrontation. And violent confrontation, or I call adversarial politics, you know, partisan politics to me has paralyzed the world. Violent confrontation has paralyzed the world. And by, by, by the way, I'm not in any way saying that, that we shouldn't participate in the political process. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that adversarial politics, uh, what I'm seeing is, whether I'm here in Switzerland or in, in Holland or where I'm at, this adversarialness 
fighting back and forth. You come up with a good idea, I'm going to undermine you just because it's your idea, not mine. If it was my idea, I'd go for it. But you brought it up first, and I didn't, I didn't hear it, so I attack you. That's what I'm talking about. But the fourth way to co-create a future together is what I believe we're all about. It's bringing us together. And I believe that path is going to become clearer and clearer and clearer with every passing day. We are just about into the last four years of the Mayan calendar. Uh, Irvin Laszlo, who's a gentleman I got a chance to meet many years ago, he's just written a new book. Irvin Laszlo, from a scientific point of view, uh, is very clear. They're looking about 2012, that the way things are unfolding, something's got to break between now and then. The Mayans say without question, 2012 will be the beginning of a new cycle, somewhere in there. I mean, it's not exactly that moment, day. But we're going into a period of the next four years where we're going to see dramatic change, dramatic change, unforeseen calamities visiting the human family in order to wake us up so we can, we can come, and pe come together in peace. And by the way, I'm not saying there's a gloom and doom deal. I believe we still have, we can mediate what's going to happen. We can mediate it. That is, it doesn't have to become as severe as, uh, as it can be by us all together in each our own way, just like you're doing here with, with the Peace Academy, coming together, even as a few. We're responding to something much greater than ourselves right now. To have Cassandra come here. You know, Cassandra knew my mom and dad very well. You know, I know her sister. In fact, I was, when I started the university, before she got work to work there, I'd kind of encouraging her. I know her other sister. I mean, they're here for some reason. You know, whether or not you remember everything and I'm having the same thing, that's all right. The main thing is your spirit. We're all here. Um, you know, somebody that is somebody that really needs our full support is, I believe, is Jim McDermott, Dr. Jim McDermott. He's the only one that had the guts to stand up on the prior to this Iraq invasion and say, don't do this. And I believe, without question, there are some people that have no idea yet what their actions are causing. I think they have very clear things of setting up permanent military bases there in Iraq. I think they really believe that they're somehow going to, this is going to work. I, I'm not at all going to be surprised if bombing does occur in Iran. I'm not going to be surprised at all. I think that there's a desire for some people to want to prolong this thing for different political reasons. And I think it's something we really have to pray about. And I think it's up to the, to, to the, to the people of this country to, to be able to ensure that our um, political uh, representatives really, really see this situation clearly. Because I can guarantee you, we, we do take another step in this thing. And it will be an economic catastrophe for all of us. And as you know, right now, you know, uh, there's a bill going through the, it's been being introduced to Congress that will enable us to have martial law in this country for two reasons. One, for some kind of terrorist attack or whatever, and the other is for economic collapse. They can see it coming. You know, I'm, 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 part of my meetings in Salt Lake is about this issue. They knew before they ever gave those subprime loans, they were bad loans. They knew it. They knew these loans would fail, but they got their money up front. And we haven't seen the end of that deal. And as well, we know that around this country, from very good sources, there's all kinds of other Enrons. They just haven't been uncovered because there hasn't been enough economic pressure. We know to the south of us is probably the greatest movement going on at this time in history in terms of a movement, and that is in Latin America. The indigenous people are moving. There's all kinds of alliances being developed. And I asked one of the gentlemen that I met with here this last week who has uh, direct uh, input into the homeland security kind of uh, process. I said, do you think that the leadership is aware of just what's happening to the South? Aware of the creation of this new bank down there? Are you aware of the movement of, 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 of dollars into euros? All this kind of thing? Aware of the tremendous ill feelings to a large majority of our relatives in this world, especially in the South, for what we've done? Are they aware of the whole belly of this hemisphere going through this change? He says, no, I don't think so. 